Welcome back guys to Trails of Cold Steel, where last episode we hunted down the monster on the Orcs Canyon path, meeting the Fate Spinner in battle and prevailing even with the dysfunctional duo of Yusus and Machius unable to maintain a link. And as they argued afterwards, Reen stepped in to take a hit they probably deserved themselves. With Reen out of action, the group continued to Orcs Fort to complete the quest obtaining the bath salts on the way and heading back now to town they spotted a weird floating being and the provincial army giving chase. I'll do mate. Ah, uh, links and more. And finally, Reen is back. My stupidly good destroyer of worlds that he is. Let's keep going then. Dodging the- oh, I kind of got a- yeah. I want the boxes. Cooling spray. Advantage is ours. Let's finish it. Really go. good. We really need it. He saves me from so much hassle. There. For starters, this with the ATS delay, really good. Okay. Alright, someone's still healthy. I'll handle this. We it's build up turn. your CP again, don't we? Okay. Get more than enough opportunity well. there. What a waste of time. Let's go. All right, we've got 512... Mm, well, 5,120 mass epic worth of mirror currently. I'll take that. Let's go. Got his impedes. We've got... Multiple impedes in the party currently. I don't think I've got anything to complain about. It's just that he has a bit more to him in terms of survival of everyone else. That's how I feel most of the time. I'll handle it. It's my turn. I've got this. Alright, time to slash you in the butt. You better turn around the right time, aren't you? Let's get this over with. Well, they keep blocking my path, so go. I will go through them. My turn. Whether they like it or not. My turn. Hey, you went to fire, actually. What a waste of time. Let's go. It's a one hitter. Look at that Sepif, though. I can surely unlock a few slots now. Right, turn around. But the other way. Why did someone put a plans command up? In the in the chat. I never Advantage is ours. I didn't do that. Let's finish it. My turn! Maybe I should have. Maybe I should have fought something like that. There! My turn. I'm gonna get most of our CP back. Alright, can I sweep them nicely? Seems I'm only really getting a few in there. I should look to build CP rather than anything else. Should be enough for. I'll handle this. Or not. It's my turn. Very not a kill. I'll handle it. Go. Yeah, it was going to be an overkill there. Very well. The dog that's going first, but the impede managed to delay turn. that guy enough so everyone else got the attacks off. I'll handle it. Here we go. And we have 100 CP. That's the power of the eight leaves. Got our stupid special ready to go. I think I need about. If I reach the 6,000 uh, Sepith mass, then I will have enough money. To be able to buy at least three weapons, right? Let's get this over with. Here we go. Uh, well, may as well finish it. I can't hit you both. Damn, I don't have an actual aiming one. You know what, then? 
We want CP on V. I'll handle this. Then why don't we do that? Okay. That'll work too, right? Here. My turn. Uh, <laughs> oh no. My turn. If it goes through to another attack round completely, we will be able My to. My turn. Which I can do, to be yeah. honest. My turn. Big CP gains. Targets eliminated. Big gains. Got like 80 CP from that. Oi, oi, oi. I don't think it was me that made that command in the chat, no. But maybe I did and I forgot about it. <laughs> it could be. Right, Orc Scanning Path 1. Uh, is there just some boxes I could knock at quick? Because that's pretty good. You can stop now. Very well. <laughs> Let's get this over with. My turn. Well, we got CP for days. Go. Very well. 200 for nearly everyone. It's Reen that's missing it. That's a beautiful lineup. It's kind of exactly what I expected. And then we didn't get the kill. Got it. There. Well, look, they use. Plus, I'll all these this. lovely, like, CP heals and all that. Okay. That we get just from bashing away. Oh, we should be safe now. Give me that Zephyr mess. Nearly at 6,000. <laughs> Alright, back in we go. So the evening draws ever closer. I have a cup of tea. We're finally back. <sighs> My feet are killing me. Yep, we completely forget about the weird floating thing. <laughs> no one's talking about it, no one's discussing it, just it's noteworthy. We'll check it out later. I'd be gossiping about that all the way back, wouldn't you? Just about sundown. I guess that means I feel study activities are done for the day. Thank goodness for that. I'm exhausted. And I'm starving. We still haven't given it another quest yet. Whatever that strange flying object was, it doesn't seem to have come anywhere near the main thoroughfare, at least. Fortunately not. The city would be this calm if it had. Yeah, it's probably long gone by now. We should head back to the hotel before it gets dark. There's a lot to put in our daily reports today, after all. Indeed. We can figure out how best to summarize the day's events over dinner. Sure, we'll do that. All right, well, first of all, we need to head straight. We we'll head to there, then we'll head back and buy some weaponry, and work our angles from there. Right? They are still there waiting. Good. The game did not lie to me, and that's what I like the most. <laughs> Got stuck trying to avoid the dog. Doesn't like me. Oh, oh Lord Eusis. Might I assume that you've... That's correct. Here. We handed over the pink salt. Thank you very much. Allow me to hand this over as your reward then. A silver hourglass. Refusing to accept it would be rather rude, I suppose. Th thank you very much. My apologies for our rudeness earlier. It's kind of amazing how much the attitude's changed for Eusis. Well, there's no denying the influence his family holds here. And so addicted to bath salts is complete. A nice hand in. Thanks so much for getting some pink salt. We'll be sure to use it tonight. Same bath. But thank you very much. Enjoy your bath. It's a very fabulous dog you've got. Alright, weaponry. Hopefully the shops aren't closed. Oi, oi, oi. They have been here talking all day. Oh yes, I meant to ask. Did you ever see that new product of the booty? That white colour would certainly go well with my brooch. I must get my hands on it. Oh, I quite agree. I myself happen to be raising some minks on our land. Well, white minks are extremely rare after all. 
My lady, may I suggest that we... I mean, if we would undoubtedly go with my version, you agree, Forster? Why, of course. Poor guy. Poor, poor guy. Stuck there. It's the lady that tells us about tea and doesn't give us any. Cool fencing is a preferred style of swordsmanship for nobles here in Erebonia. It is a graceful yet powerful style which relies on the use of a one-handed sword. Another famous school of swordsmanship would be the RC school, favoured by knights. However, unlike court fencing, the RC school is practiced by both nobles and commoners alike. Is that why it's so big choppy? Right, what do I want then? I guess, if anything, I'd probably go with the Karen bit. Oh yeah. Don't forget we've got to actually exchange it. I'd go with the Karen bit. And... I'd go with these first and not the Synchrotron, maybe. Depends who I want in any one time, really. Oh, let's get the Saber. Alright, let's upgrade it and then see how much money we have after that with selling of other stuff. Finally, money! I'll never forget the tea blocking. One of the provincial army's armoured cars made its way towards the guardhouse I've been not long ago. That's rather ungraceful of them, even if something does seem to have happened. At the station over there? My name is Servant here, Brea. I've come from the outskirts of the Khoisan province. I came here about three years ago myself. The pay is definitely higher than you would expect from any other part of the country. I wonder if Instructor Vandalsheim will show up. So of course she switched over in half the day for everything, but of course our side's going okay. It's weird, I feel like she teaches, treats Reen as like secondary teacher. He's being groomed. <laughs> now it is in the Auburn place. <laughs> Why am I walking this way? I found plenty of good deals during my shopping spree. I'm glad, I'm glad. Do you ca care to hand me any money? Alright, let's customise those two new weapons so we can make a Sinclair Saber. That's speed and... I think ATS, doesn't it? We've got loads of U material after all this point. And let's get the double Skinner. Big upgrades. So apart from that, they are now fully equipped with their nice new weaponry. With nice stats to add on to it. Of course, there's defensive gear we can still buy, but the weaponry is a bigger boost at this point. Uh, anything else I can do? Well, I could change normal sepia for money too. So maybe that might be a bad, not a bad idea to try at some point. So normal sepia is... Oh, it's got the exchange rates on the left. Sepia mass is worth way more. So changing sepia for that doesn't seem that great. Bit of a shame. Alright, slots. Right, I don't really want to open that, because you've got five slots open already, whereas there are some people with only three slots, or four slots. So what I should do is I should equip that one. That one. You've got four currently. That one. Yep, yeah, that one. That's five. Let's do another one for you. Quartz wise, can I make an attack two or is there still only attack ones to go? Okay. Let's make one of them. Okay. Now we have some space. Good. So attack two's on you. Of course, we kind of like that. So let's give you some extra attack. And apart from that, what else? We want something that does attack too. We could do Soul Blur. I do wonder who to move what from. Thankfully, you can actually have something else now in your slots. So you'll be quite pleased with that. You know what then, if I'm not going to get anything else, I'm going to get Felas on you, so you actually have a straight revive. 
What we thought? We got items for that. Why would we need that? We got your cool attack now. Should I just make it even faster? <laughs> Super fast. Super fast. Chrono drive there as well. I remember to use that at some point in time. Alright, let's give you the airstrike or the spark arrow. I'll go with that. I give you tier as well. I'll give you airstrike. Alright, so five there, five there. One to add to you. Do you know what? I'm going to just give you tier on that slot. Well, that's why we had you in the group, wasn't it? Septic vein. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah. Hmm. Finally, they're a bit more powerful, and that also unlocks more EP for them, which is great. Anything else I can really do? There's just nothing I can do slot-wise. It's just weapon stuff, really, now, isn't it? What do everyone think about Eustace just running around everywhere? Let's go into the jewelers, see what happens if I sell my weapons and I get money-wise. So that's self 75 is barely anything. 225 and 200 for those. Well, Night Sword, Night Sword's plus one and Jewel Edge. Ah. Why not? They're not our good stuff. We've got our good stuff equipped. Nearly coming up to enough money for a good thing. I mean, we also have ingredients that we can sell. Must remember that. I feel like selling beast flesh is the way to make money in this world. Gotta sell that beast flesh. Tons of beast flesh. Sell all the beast flesh. Why not improve his strengths? What do you mean? I know I could do that, but I'm just trying to like use the courts I've currently got while also giving a certain amount of elemental spread. That's all I'm trying to do. I would improve his strengths, but you know. Let us shop again. We will buy the Synchrotron then. We could buy that as well. How much how much beast flesh do we have to sell? Now we'll leave you without weapon for now. And we've got just enough mirror to be able to upgrade it, so we've got a full party of upgraded weaponry. Life is good. Imagine your shop giving you sell where it comes with a sack of anties. It's like, hey, you want some beast flesh? Aye. I want some beast flesh. <laughs> Fresh off the press. <laughs> just blood leaking all over the counter, blood on his hands. I'm a noble. You've got to buy it now for double the price. Isn't that how it works? I think we've got enough, yes, to be able to upgrade that. So, Aerial 1 with extra ATS boost. Our guys are powerfully equipped weapon-wise. Which is good, because of course most of our battles we get a preemptive attack anyway. Defensively, we still need to buy that gear, but of course, the money. It's about the money. <laughs> Beast flesh. That's where money is. That's where the market is. Oh my, the sunset makes the city even more beautiful. I can't miss this opportunity to take a picture. You enjoy that. I'm going to go check the Noble Core, considering a tank supposedly went up to it. It would be an honor to him, wouldn't it? Yeah, we sell him the Beast Flesh. They'd be very happy. Good day, everyone. There's nothing out of the ordinary to report you at the guardhouse. I thought a tank rolled up here. You got the weird guy over there. I love how even the cat is represented by a little dot on that map. Here's the question. Do I now check everyone for hidden quests? Ooh, this looks like a good spot. Well, it hasn't really regained anything, though we do have tons of bait if I want to sling some lines or what. It's just too many people to talk to for hidden quests. 
Duke Cayenne of the Lamar province, who is effectively the factory leader, is said to be quite the hit one. Meanwhile, Duke Abreu believes that he stands above all others. Let's get along as well as all the water. <laughs> it's interesting to see two Dukes in opposition to one another. Of course, those of us here will always take Duke Abreu's side. I do wonder how we kind of notify ourselves of them. I'm waiting for my father to return for his business meeting. Had he considered sightseeing on my own, but decided against it. Oh, I guess we're a bit of a coward. And we've also got a book to read as well. And the days Phil steady returning to the hotel. Do I want to talk to everyone across the world to try and get it? I have literally talked to everyone. But now it's evening, things change. Risk it for a biscuit. <laughs> I feel like our day's done. Nothing seems out of the ordinary. When I'm thinking about previous hidden quests that we got. Now I just randomly talked to people. There was nothing really that seemed to trigger. It just seemed to be in the evening. It's been in the evening every time. Back in the school. It was at the evening at Keldia as well. Oh, balls. Did I find a hidden quest? I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't find anything. I talked to everyone. But now it's evening and, and things change, you know. Let's mull it over by reading ourselves a little story. Right. Events. Nope. Yep, we're Red Moon Rose Chapter 4. We've got it. Well, that's not how we go about reading it. How many pages is Red Moon Rose Chapter 4 going to have? Less pages! We've dropped down from 30 to 19! It's probably about a 7 minute read. Chapter 4 begins. I'll take a sip. And we'll get ready. Sit comfortably. So begins Chapter 4 of our vampire story. The Black Vampire. Two people ran through the streets of Heimdall, down cobblestones dewed with moonlight. In the lead was Rose, her navy blue coat flapping in the wind like the wings of a hawk as she pursued their foe. Just behind her and shot by her speed was Alphonse, head whipping left and right as he searched for Luca. There'd been no sign of her on the short path between the tavern and the grocery store where she had apparently been sent. When Rose had sensed the ominous presence of the vampire outside the tavern, she immediately set about following it. Alphonse didn't know what kind of trail she had picked, but she flew down streets and narrow paths without hesitation, as if following a puff of strings back to its master. To find his friends, they now followed the vampire, spurred by that terrible certainty that the two were connected. Heek! The sound of a piercing shriek filled the air, sending a chill up Alphonse's spine and freezing him to the spot. There was no mistaking its owner. It was Luca's voice. Luca! Alphonse cried. Where are you? The scent is coming from this way, Rose called before rushing down a narrow alleyway. Alphonse followed, stumbling over his own feet in his desperate attempt to keep up with her. He could barely breathe from running so much, but he ignored the tightness in his chest and sped on. Kicking inside boxes and garbage piled here and there on the path, he eventually reached the other side of the alleyway and emerged into a neighbouring street. In it stood someone, or something. It was draped in a black overcoat, the upper half of his head wrapped in a large cloth. Not even its eyes were visible. The only part of the body that remained uncovered was the bottom half of his face, a deathly pale expanse of flesh with a twisted smile at its centre. At first glance, it almost seemed human. Alphonse was not fooled. This is it, he thought. This is the vampire. It was then that he realised the black clad figure was holding something in his arms. Luca. Just as that realisation hit, the vampire's rictus of a grin yawned wide as it opened its jaws. Alphonse caught a fleeting glimpse of beast-like fangs. Too long, too sharp to be human. Seeing them, Alphonse instantly recalled the bite marks on the murder victim's necks. As he watched horrified, those needle-like teeth descended towards Luca's throat. Rose was the first to act. In a movement so fast he could barely track it, she withdrew several thin objects from the inside of her cloak and threw them at the vampire. Alphonse remembered her showing him them as part of her vampire hunting kit. The knives flashed in the moonlight as they sped toward the creature. As he was about to sink its fangs into Luca, the vampire turned towards them, dodging the knives just in time. Luca fell to the ground, and the vampire jumped high into the air, descending just behind Alphonse. It happened so fast that Alphonse was still staring at the spot the vampire had been when it landed silently behind him. The creature that was terrorizing Heimdall, the murderer of countless women, the thing that attacked Luca, it was so close. Anger overrode fear. Alphonse clasped the hilt of his military saber and drew it. He spun round, slashing horizontally across the vampire's chest. The blade made contact. The vampire laughed. Alphonse was transfixed as the wound on the creature's chest healed. The next instant, the vampire punched his right fist out toward the pit of Alphonse's stomach at incredible speed. Ah! 
The impact was so great that it forced him back, expelling all of the air from his lungs. And while he was able to protect his vital organs, he had still suffered the full brunt of the blow. He doubled over in agony. Get down! Rose cried out from behind him. With no choice but to obey her as best as he could, he let himself fall limply to the ground. As he did, the stir of air from Rose's lightning fast rapier thrust ruffled his hair as it passed. The vampire didn't laugh this time. Perhaps sensing danger from the rapier's silver radiance, it threw up its left arm in defense. The blade pierced flesh, and Rose followed through with a strike, screwing the limb right through to the other side. The tip stopped just before reaching the creature's chest. White smoke poured from the wound. Unlike Alphonse's earlier attack, it seemed Rose's had actually been able to damage it. Rose tried to move the sword, but it was stuck fast. The vampire smiled again. <laughs> so you must be the vampire hunter responsible for stealing those ghouls. She ignored him and tried the sword again. I'd heard that many of her brethren had fallen at the hands of a vampire hunter. He continued in a low, sibilant voice. I certainly did not expect the hunter in question to be a mere girl. Rose gave a derisive laugh. Brethren? I think you'll find that word is meant for humans, not beasts like your kind. The vampire hissed and she bared her teeth at it as they both fought for control of the sword. Rose tried pushing forward, urging the blade on while the vampire kept the muscles in its forearm as rigid as steel to thwart her movement. Still lying on the ground, Alphonse gathered just enough strength to begin crawling his way to Luca's side. When he reached her, a quick check lessened the mad pounding of his heart. She was unconscious, but otherwise unharmed. Relief washed over him. Rose's voice brought Alphonse back to the situation at hand. She and the vampire were still locked together, each refusing to yield. If we were to stay here like this until morning, your power would be sure to weaken significantly. I'd be happy to spend the night with you until then, if you wish, she suggested to it. It made unsettling sounds somewhere between a snort and a laugh. I'm afraid I will have to refuse your kind proposal, my beautiful lady. Not the least because thanks to you and your pitiful human friend, my evening meal has been rather spoiled. As it uttered those words, the vampire's outline began to blur. Alphonse blinked rapidly, trying to clear his vision, but it was no trick of the shadows. The creature's form was dissipating into a fine black mist. Though its mouth was disappearing like the rest of it, his voice somehow carried on. Should I of you ever seek to disturb my dinner again, I hope you are prepared for the consequences. And then it was gone. Silence fell. Gradually, Alphonse got used to the pain in his chest from the vampire blow. He counted it good fortune that he'd only lost his breath and not broken any bones. With a final steadying wheeze, he hoisted the unconscious Luca on his back and rose slowly to his feet. I guess that's not the end of our vampire then, he said unhappily. Rose was inspecting a sword for damage. Finding none, she returned it to its sheath. Turning their body to mist is one of the many abilities vampires have. It escaped from us this time, but I expect that it will take some days for its left arm to heal. At the very least, I think it's safe to assume that no one else will be attacked tonight. It sounds like vampires are unbelievable foes to be up against. That's a relief though, at least still, he added. You're pretty unbelievable yourself. Rose shook her head. Their loss obviously rankled her. Next time, she said with steel in the voice, it won't get away. I'm gonna find some stronger equipment, and I will finish it for good. Alphonse nodded. Next time they would have it. They might not have been able to defeat the vampire, but at the very least they had earned a short respite from danger, having saved Luca and prevented another murder from occurring. And without Rose's assistance, none of it would have been possible. Thank you, Rose. If you hadn't been here... She cut him off with a dismissive wave of the hand. There was no reason to thank me. I was simply doing my duty. Dejected, Alphonse fell silent. But these murders are not over yet. We will need to discover the true identity of the vampire for that to happen. Yeah, he said at length. You're right. Either way, should we go and investigate another crime scene tomorrow like we discussed earlier? Indeed. Farewell for now. And with that, she left. She didn't even wait for Alphonse's response, a fact that left him feeling even more downhearted considering all they had been through that night. Afterwards, Alphonse took Luca to her home. As he walked, she finally woke up, finding herself on his back. She flushed and stammered away through his questions. She remembered nothing of what had happened to her, it seemed. Unable to tell her the truth, Alphonse simply said that he had found her collapsed outside. It was probably just fatigue from work, he told her. Thankfully, she seemed convinced. All the while, as he tried to feign cheerfulness to put her at ease, his mind was still focused on the battle earlier. He understood a chance against the vampire, he even forgotten the silver short sword that Rose had given him. In the heat of battle, he had simply fallen back on his military training and used his sabre, for all the good that had done. While he had at least been able to avoid getting Rose's way, he felt ashamed as an Imperial soldier. Next time, he swore to himself, he would not let her down. He would help bring an end to the murders once and for all. As Alphonse hardened his resolve that night, Rose navigated the dark streets alone, her mind fixated on the past. The sight of Alphonse on the ground after being struck by the vampire, the image of his friend who had lo almost lost her life and been turned into a ghoul, and the vision of that one cursed memory she desperately sought to forget. Am I on the verge of making the same mistake a second time? She wondered aloud. She stopped in her tracks, brow furrowed and expression meek. 
and looked up to where the crimson moon hung like a great malevolent eye in the sky. So ends chapter 4. Why don't you just tell Luca there's vampires? Let's maybe not, you know, go out at night anymore. Now read it backwards? Sure. The devil's speech. Why not go out anymore? Don't go out at night. Always do the day shift. Nothing else. That would be good. As for hidden quests, it doesn't really appear like most much people have actually changed their location at all. Apart from that boy. We shall have thought would be a sign. Everyone seems to be pretty much sitting in the same places or standing in the same places. Study of cooking and pursuit of new tastes is never ending. Even I still can still continue to learn new things. Continuing to pursue new knowledge is what allows me to satisfy the noble's ever changing tastes. I do wonder. Am I making a mistake here? I'm gonna go in. <laughs> we'll pray. I mean, what's the difference? S versus A rank? It won't be too much of a difference here. Have I looked everywhere? I've talked to pretty much everyone once. I'm going in. Such is the way of play. We're gonna end the field study. That's... Father. Huh? What? I'm entirely sorry for not coming to greet you, Father. Although I'm here for but a short time, I, Eustace, have returned to... Enough. As I inform Rufus, you may do as you wish while you're here. However, you will do nothing that brings shame upon myself, nor upon the Albulean name. Please be ever mindful of your position and what you represent. Yes, Father. Um, would it be too much to ask you to introduce yourself to my class? I have no time for pleasantries. Should I require anything of you, you will be contacted. Pleasant. What was that all about? Fee, that's not really... That was the almighty Duke Alberea, was it? The head of one of the four great houses and the man in charge of this entire province. Indeed. My some strange twist of fate, my father as well. You, sis. I've spoken out of turn. Forget I said that. Today's workload has made me hungry. Should we return to our rooms and find something to eat? That sounds good to me. I'm starving. At this point, Reed and the others returned to their rooms for a much needed shower. Then after a short rest, they headed to a restaurant in the central plaza for dinner. Is it the one he likes so much? It is indeed. Sitting at the doggy seat. Ah, <sighs> the breeze here feels wonderful. <laughs> the food was delicious too. Agreed. I can see why this restaurant is popular with the nobles. Do you dine here often, Eusis? I do. The chef has been good to me since I was a child. I was practically raised on this food. How typical. Even in your dining habits, you nobles subsist on unnecessary luxury. Though I can't deny the quality of the food. It wasn't just tasty, but warm, too. Yes. For a high-class restaurant, the chef seems to have used a lot of very healthy ingredients. Perhaps he's doing his part to ensure Yusis stays in good health. I wouldn't doubt it. I, I wonder what Group B is doing right now. <laughs> we had this exact same conversation in our group last month, too. I'm sure they're hard at work over in St. Ark. Probably nothing to worry about. It was Keldic for you last month, right? So you were thinking of us on the first night? Yeah. After dinner, we were wondering how Group B was getting on. Dare I ask? Uh, well... Nowhere near as peacefully as now. This is a big improvement. I... kind of figured that much. We are doing much better this time. That much is true. Huh? And I'm sure our reports will reflect that. It is an improvement, though I'm not convinced it's good enough. It... it's not? I'm certain Group B gave their absolute best in all of their tasks today. But can we honestly say the same? 
that we could have done no better? And I'm referring not just to the monster encounter, but to the handling of our other tasks as well. Hmm. We'll just have to try and make up for it in the day we have left. Besides, we had the chance to catch sight of a far bigger problem. Yes, that's true. First we find out taxes are rising throughout the province. Then we find out the military is being expanded on a grand scale. Don't even try to tell me the two aren't related. I have no intention of denying it. But you're only looking at one side of the coin. Exactly how many Oxen tanks do you think the Imperial Army has under their control? Well... A hundred or two, I'd guess. Precisely. The Imperial Army's military capabilities are enormous. This nation has one of the most powerful armed forces on the continent, and roughly 70% of it is under the Chancellor's control. Tell me, how is the Noble Alliance supposed to counter that? So, you're suggesting that's why the Provincial Army needs to bolster its forces? Considering both sides are comprised of Erebonians, it all seems so wasteful. Ah, oh, the travails of youth! How noble and beautiful they are! It's you! Baron Blue Blanc, I believe? Ha <laughs> ha! It's such an honor that you would remember a mere Baron. I see you've completed a hard day's work already. How splendid! Yes, nearly. What about you? Alas, I have yet to be blessed with the fateful encounter I seek. The search for beauty is filled with perils and obstacles, yet that is precisely what makes it all so beautiful. Well, I hope you enjoy the rest of your stay. <laughs> I most certainly will. Though it truly is a pity that the clear air of this verdant city should be tinged, if but faintly, with the scent of steel. <laughs> I'd heard that Duke Alborea was a man of many interests, but I was unaware he counted playing with fire among them. I don't condemn him for it, though, for only by playing with fire can one create fireworks. Would you not agree, my friends? I don't like your implications. And I think this whole line of conversation is a little inappropriate. Oh, please do pardon me, young lady. I meant no harm, I assure you. I wish you well on your remaining day here. May you reveal to me the beauty I seek by its end. Be it the lovely luster of success or the sad splendor of failure. <sighs> Who does he think he is? This is why I can't stand nobles. <laughs> I thought you might say that. If it makes you feel better, though, I have my doubts as to whether that man truly is a noble to begin with. What? His behavior seems so exaggerated. Almost as if he's trying to act like the quintessential noble. Like he's fulfilling the stereotype. Yeah, something about him feels off to me, too. But what's even stranger... Is that he knew we only have one day left here. It, you're right. We told him of our field study, but never once did we divulge how long we intended to remain here. Between him and that silver object, we've been crossing paths with a lot of strange people today. Well, tomorrow's the end of our stint here. We can't let ourselves get distracted. We still have a lot to do. That's right. We have to do our group proud. <laughs> exactly. We should return to the hotel and begin work on our reports then. Sleepy time by the look of it. Hello Hoppy by the way, thank you for the, uh, the host. Ah, Blue Blank, what an enigmatic character. I definitely don't put on the voice. I knew he spoke that way, definitely. Why aren't we all sleeping in the same room? Also, you've got clothes on. I guess you want to be ready for combat. 
See, he's at least got his PJs. <sighs> Can't get to sleep. I could ask you the same. You aren't going to tell me the bed's too hard for you, are you? <laughs> I wouldn't dream of it. I've never slept in a bed this high class in my life. Not even back at home. And yet you're the son of Baron Schwarzer. You've not lived the life one might expect of a boy from a noble family. Yeah, that's just how my dad is. A lord should live like his people, not above them. That's how he always put it. I see. It sounds as though you have a good family. Yeah, I'm very thankful for my upbringing. Aren't you going to ask? I assumed you'd be curious about that brief exchange with my father earlier. I wasn't really sure you'd want me to bring that up. You obviously get along really well with your brother, but... I didn't get that same sense with the Duke. Has he... always been like that? As far back as I can remember. I suppose he just has little respect for a son born to a commoner. What? My brother and I have different mothers. He was born of my father's legal wife, a noble who still lives to this day. My own mother, however, was a commoner, and she passed away eight years ago. In other words, I am his bastard son. I had no idea. So, was that chef we met earlier? He's my uncle, on my mother's side. Perhaps that's why he's always been so good to me. Or perhaps he's simply compelled to treat me as I deserve to be treated, being the son of the Duke. No, that can't be. I don't blame you for being a little cynical, but there's no need to be quite so hard on yourself. I suppose you're right. I'm... I'm sure you have your differences, but you do get along with your brother, right? You could say that. He's treated me well ever since I was taken in eight years ago. He was the one who taught me my swordsmanship, and who trained me in the ways of court etiquette. <laughs> I knew it. Pardon? There's just something honest, I guess you could say, about the way you fight. It shows that whoever taught you was someone you really trusted. When we first met him this afternoon, I had a hunch he might have been the one. What's wrong? <laughs> Nothing at all. You just keep reminding me how unlike a noble you truly are. <laughs> I get that a lot. Is your injury from this afternoon on the mend? It's fine, honestly. There's no pain, and the wound's closed up like it was never there. I'll have to be sure to thank Emma's grandmother for her help someday. That's good to hear. Still, from where I stand, you are something of a danger to yourself. I... am? On the day of the entrance ceremony, when the trapdoor opened beneath us, you acted instantly to protect Elisa. There wasn't even a moment's hesitation. Ah. In most cases, one would reflexively act to protect himself. It's part of man's natural survival instinct. Yet you put another before yourself, not even pausing to question the validity of that decision. And you did exactly the same thing with us today. I'm sure most people would see that as an act of selflessness and sing your praises for it. But to me, it comes across as abnormal, perhaps even twisted. <laughs> I, uh... Don't know how to respond to that. I wasn't expecting you to see through me quite so clearly. Well, I owed you as much for having seen through me first. Still, the point stands. You need to be more cognizant of the effects your actions have on those around you. If not for your health and for your... reputation. That selflessness of yours can just as easily be perceived as arrogance, after all. I know it can. And you're not the first person to tell me that. What's the point in saving others if you can't spare even a moment to save yourself? That's what my old master always used to say to me. Was it now? <laughs> <laughs> I 
I suppose we both have some things we need to work through. Yeah, but for now, we need to get a good night's sleep. If we stay up too late tonight, we're going to be dead to the world tomorrow, and that wouldn't be fair to the others. <laughs> I agree, it wouldn't be fair. To the girls, at least. I'd hate to be so tired as to limit my potential. Here, here. Good night, Eusis. Pleasant dreams. Of course he heard it all. You knew that was how that scene would play out, but that scene was really quite nice. They came across each other quite nicely. Quest report, quest done. Drinks are on me, someday. Yeah. Except we're not done, obviously. Drinks are on her, Sunday. Drinks are on her! <laughs> Who sleeps with glasses on? Yeah, exactly. You're breaking that way, God. I used to. Like, way back, I did sometimes fall asleep with glasses on, but I always take them off now. Here's the envelope Lord Rufus entrusted to me. Please take it and study its contents well. Thank you. Much appreciate it. If you'll excuse me then, should you require anything further, please do not hesitate to let me know. Alright, let's see what my brother's given us for today. Yeah, I'm kind of anxious. Field study, day two, assigned tasks. Right, two, the Bite of Nostalgia and North Cloison Highway Monster. How many quests did we get? No, we only got... We got... Two optionals last time, wasn't it, in Caldia? And then we had the one that we just decided to do ourselves, so this is interesting. Vitam Nostalgia. I'd like to request someone's help in gathering a number of ingredients I need to make a particularly nostalgic dish. For more details, come find me at Sorcier, a restaurant in the Central Plaza. Sure, we've got to get some lovely, lovely ingredients. Do I have them already? Right, another monster, North Coison Highway monster. We received words that a dangerous monster roams the North Coison Highway. Is it up in the middle on that little peak? This is bad news for our hotel, so may I ask someone to please take care of it? It's a Venus man trap, not flies, mans. The stone bridge leading towards Keldic on the North Coison Highway. Okay, it's not there. So you just want me to go straight there? Well, I guess we'll go to the Bite of Nostalgia first. So that's just the restaurant across the road, isn't it? Another well-balanced assortment. You know. I wouldn't be surprised if Rufus had predicted what happened yesterday from the very start. He's saying he intended to give us a first-hand look at the problems between the nobles and the commoners. Huh, if that's true, I'm impressed. His reputation is well earned. Should have seemed that way. I believe that's enough talk about my brother. We have only one day left before we must depart on our return voyage to Trista. We should set out as... Eustace Alborea. What is it, Machius Regnitz? I will accept no more failures. Today, we will form a combat link. What? As much as I may dislike you, I'm ashamed that we were unable to do what every other member of our class has accomplished. Today's monster extermination request seems as good a chance as any to make up for yesterday's failure. What did you say? You really are simple-minded, aren't you? I suppose you overheard our conversation last night and feel some kind of affinity toward me now? Oh, why do you have to bring it up? N nonsense! I did no such thing! I was fast asleep while you yammered on about your family and Reen and... Uh. Machias. <laughs> That's pretty conclusive. <sighs> Very well. I accept. I'll be happy to show you what a proper combat link looks like. <laughs> we'll see about that. Fortunately, I have more than enough generosity of spirit to endure being paired with an arrogant noble like you. <laughs> Maybe today's field study will go more smoothly than yesterday's after all. Lord Eusus. Arno? What brings you here? I would have expected you to be at my father's side. I'm terribly sorry I could not greet you upon your arrival yesterday. However, I have come today in the capacity of an escort. An escort? To where? I'm sure you must be aware that I returned to Bereahard purely as part of a field study for my academy work. But of course, however, 
His Grace has directly requested that I escort you to the mansion. So I would be most appreciative if you'd accompany me without delay. Father? He showed no signs of desiring my company when we spoke yesterday. I am in no position to question or oppose his orders, merely to obey them. I'm sure you understand. Though while I hesitate to speculate, I do wonder if His Grace may feel some regret regarding his demeanor yesterday. I... Uh, but... Go with him. We can attempt to form a combat link another time. We'll be able to handle the morning's tasks just fine on our own. Don't worry about us. Huh. You've come all the way back to your hometown. It would be a shame not to visit with your family, right? Agreed. Uh, are you certain? Very well. I'll return this afternoon. And though I will worry as to how you'll fare without me, I know you'll at least give it your best, for what that's worth. <laughs> of course we will. All right, let's meet back in the hotel lobby around noon. If something comes up, just leave a message at the front desk. Understood. Lead the way, Arno. Gladly, sir. Please excuse us. Well, let's get started. We wouldn't want to give Yusus any further reason to worry, now would we? Huh, certainly not. Still... What? What is it? If you have something to say, just say it. <laughs> oh, it's nothing. Nothing at all. She's probably thinking, the worst is over, and it's all thanks to your eavesdropping. Good boy. Just stop that! Just stop looking at me like I'm some hapless babe! Rain, you do know I still haven't completely forgiven you for lying, don't you? Are you still hung up on that? And Emma! I hope you're ready to score second in our midterms because I'm not about to lose to you again. But don't even think about giving those exams any less than your very best. I intend to best you when you're in top form. <laughs> you will? And as for you, Fee, I've been wanting to say this for a long time now. Sleeping in class is an affront to our education. You need to start treating classes more seriously. Listen, take proper notes. Raise your hand now and then. And stop covering your ears when I'm talking to you! I can't hear you! <laughs> anyway, we've got a lot to do, so how about we get to it? <laughs> right. Pete's got life sorted, hasn't she? Juice has temporarily left the party. Well, if that's the case, we are set up with these guys, which is really disappointing because, of course, whose weapons did we just upgrade? <laughs> God dang! Why you do this to me? <laughs> oh, well. We want to have a weapon, but we've got to get ourselves some mirror first, which means we have to go fighting. But of course, it's a new day. Yes, it is. So let's not be sour and talk to people to find if we get some stuff. Not all nobles are the same. There are even low-ranking nobles like myself who own no land whatsoever. I do own a small business in Heimdallum, but there's hardly any difference between myself and a common merchant. Truth be told, nobles here in Bereyahard are a bit too dazzling for me. Dazzling nobles of Bereyahard. Oh, you, you're the quest guy? Excuse me, we've come to ask for some details on the monsters we've been asked to uh, exterminate? Certainly. Allow me to tell you what I know. The monster is situated on the North Cloison Highway and was first spotted by the Provincial Army. The report describes it as resembling a large carnivorous plant. Neat. That sounds rather terrifying. Hmm. Does it really matter what kind of monster it is? We just need to hurry up and exterminate it. Incidentally, you will find it on top of a stone bridge on the highway, which can be reached by heading straight out of town. Please do be careful. Sure thing. You didn't give me any more information apart from that. Time to go around and talk to everyone. Wish you all luck with today's task. We we'll, shall be sure to notify you should Lord Eustace get in contact, so feel free to set out without concern. Well, we're good. Which means talking to everyone as well will require us to go quite far afield. So let's pick up this quest over here first. I've heard that Marquis Logner of the Four Great Houses who lives to the north has quite the temperament. He always resorts to brute force when anything happens with his province. 
Meanwhile, Marquis Hayams, who rules the Sutherland province, is relatively gentle. He's quite flexible in his policy making, and the province's residents seem to have very little issue with him. Of course, he does act with the dignity one would expect from a member of the Four Great Houses. Mummy said yes when I asked her if we could go play. <laughs> She's gotten really nice all of a sudden. Why? Fina was rather persistent, so I brought him along today too. I do have some plans for dinner tonight, but oh well. I wasn't particularly thrilled by the idea of going in the first place. Aw, oh, kiddo. You've been... Just used as an excuse. Right, who do I need to speak to about the ingredients? Aha! Uncle! Greetings and welcome. Hello, Hammond. We're here to take up your requests, but I'd like to thank you for that delicious meal last night first. It was good. Oh, I'm pleased to hear that. May I ask where Lord Eustace is, though? He was called back to the mansion, I'm afraid. We have plans to meet up with him in the afternoon, however. Is that so? It's too bad Eustace isn't here, considering this request is from his uncle. Anyway, about your request. Ah, uh, yes, as you read, I would like you to gather some ingredients for me. Are you all currently free? If so, I will explain the details of what I need. Yes, we can take it up now. Please go ahead and explain. The request mentions something about making a nostalgic dish. Correct. Said dish isn't on our menu, but it's one that I would like you all to try. I assume it's a rather special dish, then. There's no doubt about how delicious it'll be if you're making it, at least. What kind of dish is it? Perhaps soup is the best way to describe it. I'll probably make it enough for you all to enjoy, so please look forward to that. <laughs> how could we not? What is it you need us to gather, then? There are two types of ingredients I'd like you to ask you to gather for me. The first is globby fat, which can be collected from monsters on the highway. I need five of those to be exact. The other is a herb used by the Septian Church to synthesize medicine called a healing herb. So five piles of globby fat and a healing herb. Where do we get the herb from, then? You want to speak to Sister Tatiana at Beleahard Cathedral. I'm sure she'll be willing to part with one. Just tell her I sent you. Alright, that sounds easy enough. Shall we start on the task at hand? Yeah, let's head to the cathedral first. Roger. So we're looking for basically fat for stock. Do we have any of this globby fat already? We have two. That's a farming quest, isn't it? Do you happen to know his commoner's background at all? She comes from a rather wealthy family in Heimdall, it seems. They even seem to have connections with Heimdall's local government too. Ah, huh, then all is fine, isn't it? She seems like an appropriate friend for your daughter. Daughter? This this baron is called Caroline. Well, that's cr true, but... Definitely looks like a Caroline. You're such a worry what? Oh, well, keep going. I'll open another one for you. Another bottle of wine? I thought that name was wrong, really. This restaurant was the first place to give me the chance to perform for Mira. As you can imagine, I have many fond memories of it. I owe much to the owner for allowing me to do so, too. Right, which one of you is going to have, like, a quest or something if I didn't miss a quest yesterday? Hello, everyone. Did you enjoy your meal last night? We were excited to serve Lord Eustace again for the first time in a while. We hope to see you again. Perhaps I should take the time to end in the town today. What to do there, though? Do I take the time to marvel at the pair of Pegasi on the roof of Duke Albalea's mansion? Or will I be better off dedicating my time to the ancient waterways that run under the city? I want to go down there. Sure, there must be more important things for us to go and see. No, no, the waterways sound cool. Still there with the beer. The tax hikes in the Croizen province have really taken their toll on the sales. Not really an issue over in Heimdall, though. The market there still has plenty of room for growth. I'll have to make sure Baron Fafnir and I come to an agreement today. You're here again? I'm actually planning on taking this chance to propose to her. We've been going out for four years now, so yeah, I want to make things artificial. Want a high class restaurant? Moves nice and romantic? <laughs> Plans pretty well, didn't I? Well, the fact you've been here for 24 hours. She might be wanting to go to sleep. Or to the loo. I've gotten the hang of the table etiquette rules here now. This really is delicious. If only you could eat like this every day. No, you put the high class dining in her. It seems that Lord Eustace was called home by the Duke. My word, just what business would the Duke have with someone like him? A good question. You can't truly expect anyone to support Lord Eustace when commoner blood courses through his veins, can he? Lord Rufus will be the one taking his father's place regardless. Lord Eustace is but a mere spare, should things go wrong. That is how nobles are often thought of in that regard, isn't it? Or bastard children. I know exactly how you feel, Machias, but nothing good will come from confronting them. <laughs> There's no need to tell me that. Let's go. We've got no business with these fools. Mm, what is it, commoner? Please, if you know business with us, be gone. You're ruining the nice scenery. Oh, I don't want to be in the vicinity of you clowns anyway. I'd like to point out, all our noble boys are not noble. When's the reveal for Sarah? 
Oh, not Sarah. Laura. It's almost time for my train home. I'm sad to leave, but all good things must come to an end, I suppose. I should take some last minute pictures before leaving. Haha, <laughs> keep taking pictures, Dad. Make sure you get that found in the cathedral, too. So, who haven't I spoken to in this bit? You? While Duke Abareus certainly acts like a Duke should, it makes him a rather difficult person to deal with. Not even those close to him are allowed to have a say in his decisions. None except Lord Rufus, of course. Things must be difficult for him. Okay, I'll leave that area for now. Because I want to gather some money and I'll have to go that way anyway to do that, so I'll take that trip. <sighs> so, the monster's out there. The oh, I haven't gone to the church yet. <laughs> Uh, so the monsters out there, the globby fat. But if we're going to talk to pretty much everyone, then we've got to make one hell of a serious detour as well. All the way at the Blooming Canyon robe. I came to offer my prayers before returning home. This will be the last time I get to do so at such a magnificent cathedral, after all. The Prince sister came here to greet us earlier. She was ever so elegant too. Even the sisters of Berehard fit this hideous high class image, it seems. Well, let's speak to sister sister. I've only just noticed recently, but the sister is ever so graceful. I feel as though I recognise her from somewhere too. Can't say for sure, however. Her habit covers much of her head. Uh, she's not here, she's in one of the side rooms by the film. Our Bishop Amamon has made appeals to Duke Abarea in regards to recent events. He doesn't seem to be willing to lend an ear, however. To make matters worse, he stopped attending mass recently too. Ah, whatever should we do about this? It's quite interesting that the uh, non-noble faction has control over like 70% of the military. That is a power imbalance if there is some kind of actual serious political factional thing that needs to be actually addressed. So technically the movement for more arms is just a natural course of politics in this thing. E.g. like things like the Cold War, etc. Which isn't good for anyone because of course more weapons can only mean more death, but... It's one of those only moves you can make kind of thing, isn't it? Unless you capitulate. I've been mean, receiving many letters from every church in the Khoisan province ever since the tax increase began. Each and every one of them detailed the negative effects said tax has been having and how the people are suffering for it. I've also heard talk that Aurox Fort is strengthening his armies too. Perhaps Duke Abarea needs to be reminded that Adios' one desire is for us to be at peace. It was 70% to 30, wasn't it? That's quite a power imbalance. Hello? When you go in this room before. Oh, good day. Is there something you need from me? You must be Sister Tatiana, I assume. Could we trouble you for a healing herb by any chance? Hammond from Saucier told us that we'd be able to procure some here. Oh, is that so? I see. Would you mind waiting a bit while I prepare one for you? Here you go. We appreciate it, Sister. This is an ingredient used for making medicine, isn't it? Is it safe to use for food, too? Of course, it's a very healthy ingredient when used for food. The only issue is that it's very bitter, so some inventiveness on the part of the chef is required to hide that. I see. Hammond must have some way of doing so then. I'm kind of interested in how he does it. Likewise. <laughs> Same here. Well, thank you again for the help. Nah, you're welcome. Yeah, woohoo. Alright, so that's the healing herb. We still need the globby fat. And then we got that monster to get rid of. Let's continue our talkings of the day by talking to everyone on this area. And then we'll go up and talk to people at the fort. I'm a bit of a sidetrack. Lord Eustace's mother was a commoner, I believe. There are some nobles who would speak ill of him because of that. It's not really my business, but I still find myself upset on his behalf. I bet. 